Well, hey, everybody. Um, so it's Thursday morning for you, Thursday evening for you. Um, so Matthew and I, I pulled another article off McKnight's, and this one is about, um, so they did a study in England, and the study suggests, let me read the title again, cognitive frailty may res be a result of just aging, not the brain changes found in dementia. This was yesterday on the 11th. They, 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 did the, they reported the study. And it's like, wait, what? So here's, here's, the, here's the story behind the story. So this study looked at people who had the evidence of MCI, mild cognitive impairment. But it wasn't so significant in how they rate these things as being full-blown dementia. Okay, for, but they were in the community and they did have evidence of MCI. Now, for those of you who've heard us talk before, you've heard me talk before, you know that I don't believe that MCI in the office or in a study is the same thing as MCI when you're living day to day. I believe that people's brains pull it together and can really look good in a visit that lasts an hour or two or even three but then collapse afterward because that's not their usual pattern. And on a day-to-day -day basis, they have potentially more areas where, ooh, boy, you might see some really significant differences in ability. Or because their life is really simple and they have really great support, they may look more impaired in the office than they do in everyday life because they're, they've got the right support, they've got the right environment, they've got the right routine. And so things are going pretty swimmingly. And yet somebody looks at thing in the office and goes, well, they've got to be coming apart at the seams. And it's like, well, no, they're doing really pretty good, you know, because they've already done some adapting. So, you know, my opinion, well, maybe you don't. But anyway, that's my opinion about the idea of MCI. I think MCI is an office term. And I think it's better to ask the person and the people around does it feel like it's awkward or does it feel like it ranges from this is hard to I don't know what to do sometimes, which to me is tipping us over more into this is enough of a change that is creating a disability. I mean, it's a disability to function. And that means it's in the terms that we currently have, it's neuro, you know, something's going on neurologically that should be more carefully investigated. Because it's not normal, just with normal aging, to have that kind of shift in your life. I mean, that's like saying, oh, yeah, you got to go get your rocking chair pretty far in advance because you're going to be sitting on the front porch whittling or knitting because those will be the only things available to you as you get older. Because, you know, you're going dis to disconnect. You're not going to be able to hear well. You're not going to really want to do what you, you have arthritis. So just you know, start giving it up. I mean, it feels a little like that because... The study said, OK, so if we look at everybody who fits in that, you know, if we look at people who are in that MCI category and then we look at their brains, we see a subgroup of them have reduced sizes of the hippocampal area. Now, that is a classic indication. Reduction in, in the hippocampal area is a, a classic indication of a key symptom for having Alzheimer's disease. It is. But it's not necessarily the key symptom for having vascular dementia, Lewy body dementia, or frontal temporal lobe dementia. So this is where I've got to say, hmm, all right. Now, what they did is they said people who had lower volume in their hippocampal area, and they lined up with people who had more problems with immediate recall and recent memory detail issues. And it's like, well, yeah, because that's the area of the brain that does that stuff. Those people might be more likely to get lost when they're moving around and they might have trouble keeping up with time, how long, how long since kind of stuff. And it's like, all true. I wonder what other parts of their brain might have been impacted as well because we know it has to be at least two parts to be considered a dementia. But the conclusion of this group is because there wasn't a reduction in the hippocampal area, then these people probably didn't have dementia. It was just part of the normal spectrum of aging. But they didn't look at all the other brain areas to find out 
okay, well, was were there changes in other parts of the brain, two of them, that indicated there were changes and they were at a significant level? Matthew, you've been around the block a few times. Your thoughts about that jump in logic, which is why we put one plus two equals F or L or what? <laughs> Yeah, Tipa, it, it's just, to me, it seems like we're still trying to push this piece of if it's not memory loss, then it, it's not dementia or making. Well, if it's not memory loss and it's not Alzheimer's, then it can't be a dementia. It it's like, yeah. what? Yeah, it, I, it's very confusing to me why we're still holding on to that, just that part. That's what we're feeling like is that indication, you know, with right. this particular article. So the idea of, Okay, well, if I'm not seeing that, then I'm I'm done. I'm not going to look at anything else, and I'll just we're just going to chalk it up right to it. yeah. So if they looked at the other brain sections and they found shrinkages in other areas, then I would have been more supportive. And they go, oh, and then those symptoms lined up with a frontal and a language. It's like if it was a frontal lobe and a temporal lobe, so it lang- lined up with a change in language and a change in in. Um, the executive control area, some of those areas, or, you know, it was the hippocampal area and a temporal lobe, or it was um, a visual cortex kind of reduction in activity and maybe um, uh, a right, right temporal lobe, which would be facial recognition kinds of stuff and object recognition, most posterior cortical, you know, kind of things. So if they had done a more careful like sorting out or, oh, although we don't see reduction, we see a lot of dead, little dead areas or reduced flow areas. That may be vascular. So let's see what they're, oh, they have a weird pattern of symptoms. Then in that case, I would go, and then you have the group that you don't find any changes at all in the other parts of the brain. Then those areas I'm going, okay, well, then that may be normal aging. Or maybe it's disused atrophy. I mean, what we just need to do is plump and buff those guys up and say, okay, how much, how many are you interested in getting your brain back in gear here versus letting it slide? Like our bodies, you know, do you want to keep it fit or do you just given up on it? I mean, I'm just curious because it appears that you're not doing well cognitively. And I'm just curious. I mean, do you want to do a little better? Do you want to give yourself a shot at that? You know, and we go back to things like total, you know, total brain works, total health works, excuse me, where total brain works because they use both brain and body kind of things. And it's not a heavy duty dose. It's just that idea that maintaining yourself is something you self-care is something we should be doing. So, you know, it's just one of those things you go, how could you take that big leap and think, well, if it's not Alzheimer's, then it's normal aging. And it's like, I thought we were done with that. This is a university study. I'm just sort of disappointed, I guess. It was published. I mean, the piece apparently was published in Neuro Journal, Neuroscience Journal or something. Um, so, yeah. Hmm. So here's the deal. Um, I'm, I'm really curious here because this is another statement. Lower lifelong cognitive reserve, hearing impairment, and cardiovascular comorbidities might contribute to the etiology of a cognitive frailty. Critically, community-based cohorts of older adults with lower cognitive performance should not be interpreted as representing undiagnosed Alzheimer's disease. It's like, okay. So... (laughs) So... So, um, you know, so don't call them Alzheimer's. It's like, all right, well, I won't. So what are we going to do instead? You know, do they still, should they still be evaluated? Should be looked at for vascular dementia? Should they be looked at for other kinds of dementia? Should they be looked at the value of a hearing, uh, you know, substituting visual cueing for hearing, looking at modifying demand and environment? I mean, you know, the cardiovascular stuff. So what are we doing about that? It's like, well, it's not dementia. It's just normal aging. I mean, it seems to like be, I don't know. I don't know. I was disappointed in how it was framed, I guess. Yeah, and Tipa, for me, you know, I'm really feeling like this this is something that could continue to fuel that piece of of doctors not looking any further 
into things or not being curious and, and making that part easier when when someone sees a study like this, this idea of, you know, well, if there's no if there's no memory loss, if we're not seeing that the hippocampal area is being hit, then really this is just normal. And so they had that immediate response of, <clears throat> oh, well, sweetheart, you're 65. I mean, or you're 70 or you're 80. What do you expect? I mean, this is just normal. Yeah. And it's like, it's not normal. And that's one of our biggest challenges right now for the non Alzheimer's dementias with people have with young onset for sure. But even with older onset is that people, you know, physicians and medical providers in general are, are prone to writing off symptoms. And we talked about it in the long haul when we're talking about even with um, the idea of COVID in the long haul, people who are having the brain fog. Well, that's not a real, it's like, how dare you? I mean, it's that same concept and it's just frustrating to hear people go, oh, it's all fine. You know, just go away if it's not Alzheimer's. And it's like, I'm sorry, unacceptable. It is time to quit this stuff. And it's like, I appreciate you did the study on the MCI, I do, but don't stop there or your disservice. You're doing a disservice to everybody who doesn't have Alzheimer's, but does have something changing in their brain. And it's time to quit allowing things like that to be said without the qualifying. So you should have further evaluation to figure out what might be going on before determining it's simply a hearing problem. And even if it is, what the heck are we trying to do about this stuff? Are we modifying anything so there's a greater success? Because quite honestly, Matthew, I thought we could start working on the picture that we decided on, the brain picture that you have behind you. That, that one? Yeah, we're going to make another one. Oh, with that? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I could have turned off the sound and Matthew would have been able to get a lot of that. Why? Because I know you use visual cues. Why? Because I know to break it into small steps. Why? Because I knew that by taking my physical movement and doing it, I might be able to get Matthew to do it. I knew to pause. Well, that's skill building. And that is not normal aging behavior. That's recognizing somebody might be having some hearing difficulty, comprehending difficulty. And by changing myself, I change the world and they don't have to look and be impaired because he can he can pick colors he can pick a brain he can look at the brain he can identify the parts he can rep I mean, but it can't happen if we don't set it up to happen that's my take on it <sighs> so not feeling righteous but feeling oh man okay so got it hippocampal shrinkage isn't always the thing people should be looking at but they should be looking at something before they make a decision that nothing could be done. It's just normal aging. Not with MCI. MCI already said something's not quite right here. Yeah, you're just going to get old. It's all going to go downhill. Okay, so enough of that. We don't believe in it. We believe that we can make a difference and we do make a difference. And what we choose to do makes a difference. So we make different choices. Uh, maybe we can talk to those folks over there and see if they want to make some different choices. It's not like what they did wasn't worth it. It's just that where they landed didn't quite make as much sense as I'd hoped it would. So till next time, take care with care. Be careful out there because just because maybe your hippocampus isn't thinking doesn't mean you shouldn't do things that are good for yourself and your brain. All right, all. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>